since I've been flying drones for over six years at this point, I thought I'd help you to get started with your journey and talk about all the things that I think is important when you're on location and you want to capture some epic shots with your drone because maybe you've just purchased your drone and you don't have any sort of experience with it. I'm super glad to have you here and uh, let's get started with some beginner stuff. One of the most important things when it comes to flying a drone is to make sure that all your memory cards are offloaded before you send the bird up into the air. And the reason that this is crucial is because there's been so many times where I have used the same memory cards as last time and I have no storage and I forgot to offload that footage onto the computer. So then I had to take the drone down, I had to offload everything and then it just takes time and it makes you miss the opportunity that you're probably trying to get when you're sending the drone up. No matter if you're flying FPV with a GoPro on or if you're using Mavic 3, DJI Mini 3 Pro, make sure that before the flight, all the memory cards are done. And also, highly recommend to have one of these. This is the Prime Gear Tri-Charge, triple regular SD card slot, but also two micro SD card slots built in there. If you forget your memory cards, always make sure that this is loaded. Shameless plug, very good to have all your memory cards in one space. If you're using Sony, Canon, Nikon cameras, they can also use these batteries as a power bank to charge maybe your controller. If that's out of juice, that's great. But make sure, memory cards, offload footage. There's a bunch of different options when it comes to uh, micro SDs that you can purchase. This one that I got right here is a SanDisk Extreme, 128 gigabytes. It's a huge memory for any sort of drone nowadays. But the reason I have it is because what we talked about earlier, I forget to offload the memory cards onto my computer at times, and then I have this as a sort of a rescue. But I highly recommend you to get into the habit of offloading the memory cards. There's a couple of small numbers on the SD cards that you can see. You have the V30 and then A2. These are important when you're purchasing your SD cards, mainly because it's about how fast the SD card can write and read. So if you don't have a fast enough SD card, it's going to be hard for it to actually write the 4K material that you're capturing with your drone and it's going to be slow reading or writing process so that it's going to hang up, it's going to take some time to read the memory card when you put it into the computer. So make sure that your SD card says V30 and A2 because I've never had any issues with these SD cards. Regular drones, they are way different from flying FPV drones. The good thing with these drones is that they're easier to fly because they have a lot of different fail safes built in and you have a controller that can actually see through the camera that you're using because most consumer level drones have a camera attached onto the actual drone. So you don't need to buy a GoPro and stick onto the drone. Everything comes built into this. But there is a couple of things that you should check before you get your drone up into the air. And one of the first things that I usually do is that I check on controller, just press the power button, see how many diodes that are shining so that you actually have battery in the controller before you send anything up. Because if this dies, once the drone is in the air, that's a heartbeat race. <laughs> Next thing is to make sure that you have charge batteries. So looking at this battery right here, you can see, press the button fully charged. This battery is for the Mavic 3 Cine that I have been using for a little bit over two years. And it's a huge drone compared to what is available right now and also very expensive. You do not need to invest into a drone like this, but if you want to have some of the best image quality possible, then this is the way to go. The DJI Mini 3 Pro is my go-to everyday drone. This drone is 249 grams light, means that you can basically fly it anywhere without breaking any rules. It is very, very capable of capturing some incredibly good looking footage. Just by looking at that footage, you can see that even though you have the capability to you know, use a drone like this, it's not necessary if you just want to do this as a hobby and to begin start flying your drones. So let's make sure we have batteries in place, the controllers are loaded, and that everything is ready to go before we start the drone. So there's a couple of different ways that you can launch your drone, but one thing that's very important to keep in mind at all times when you are about to take off is that you place the drone in a safe spot. I usually take 
a couple of steps away from where I'm going to stand and then I back up and make sure that the drone is sort of like three, two, three meters between me. Main reason is because if something happens, if the wind blows or, you know, all of a sudden you don't have any clothes. Before you take off, you want to make sure that everything is started up and that you're getting GPS signals. Because without GPS, you have to fly in something that is called ATI mode. And it can be hard to navigate your drone in ATI mode if you're an unexperienced pilot. So always start the drone up, start the controller up, let it sit for two, three minutes, and then it should say that it has a home point updated, or as uh, they usually say. The home point has been updated. Please check it on the map. Once that is done, you're ready for takeoff. Two different ways to start up your drone. One way is to move to the left-hand side of the screen on your remote, and then press the arrow up, and then it's going to say, out to takeoff, the aircraft will automatically take off to an altitude of 1.2 meters, which means that it's going to raise up and stay and hover 1.2 meters above the ground. When you do that, it's a very simple takeoff. Let's give it a try. Press and hold down, release. See? Simple as that. The second way to start your drone is to take the sticks on your controller and move them down and inwards towards the middle. When you do this, the drone is not taking off. It's just starting the rotors and standing still on the ground. So you have to actively start pressing up on the thrust stick. There you go. It's a nice way to start. The right stick on your controller is going to make the drone go forward if you push it forward and then backwards, backwards to the side. It's going to fly closer, it's going to fly to the left. And then if you push to the right, it's going to push to the right. But the drone is not going to rotate. That is what you do with the left stick. So if you take the left stick and you push it to the left, your drone is going to turn to the left. Same thing if we push it to the right. It's going to spin around to the right. The left stick is also controlling up and down on your drone. And the cool thing with this is that it works exactly the same with an FPV drone. The only difference is that you don't have the auto leveling system that this drone has. But you feel comfortable to start with just to push the drone forward and then you're ready to go. Sweet. Bye bye. Your drone is in the air. What is the first thing that you do? I know that I did this for I don't know how many minutes. Maximum altitude and just fly. It can be cool if you're trying to get some top down shots. The majority of the time, though, you want to stay kind of relatively close to the ground or something that can act as a foreground for the shots that you're trying to take. But let's, for example, get a top down shot and put the drone above this river. This button on the remote is going to point the camera straight down if pressed. When you have that, it's going to be kind of an interesting angle to see from for the first time. And let's just position ourselves above the river here. So looking at this shot, there's a couple of things that I would do differently. And one of them is to rotate my drone. Okay. I'm going to hope you're going to understand why, because now when I have it rotated, we see way more of the actual river instead of having just a small portion of the screen. And this shot is going to be great for Instagram, but also for YouTube. So now what I would do is maybe lower my drone just a bit, get a little bit closer, and then I would start recording. Because if you were to send up your drone and just record everything all at once every single time, you're going to have so much footage that you have to look through when you get into the editing process. And that is not a good way to get the shots that you need because sometimes you need to conserve memory card space but also battery time so make sure that you're trying to scout out the shots that you want to have very quickly when i feel satisfied press record boof and then we lift up ever so slightly so we get a little bit of motion in the shot there we go 
Nice. Once you're done with the top down shot, try to see the different angles that you can sort of align your drone if to make it more look more interesting. And in this case, I can lower the drone again, get back a little bit closer to the water. And now I'm going to use this wheel on the left hand side of the controller because what this does is that it tilts the gimbal when I move it. So if I move it to the left, it drags the gimbal down. If I move it to the right, it tilts the gimbals up. So what we can do now is that we can do something that I call a reveal shot. So we start with the drone, kind of close to the waterfall here. This is pretty good. I'm gonna press the screen once, and then just like an iPhone, drag down the exposure a bit. There we go. And we're gonna lock it there. Nice. Tilt the gimbal down. And now this requires a lot of practice, by the way, because I've been doing this for quite some time. Start the recording, push forward slowly, and push to the right on your gimbal control. Nice. That's a good shot, right? The camera on your drone has a couple of different settings. Most of the time, if you're using a DJI drone like I am, then you can choose between auto exposure or if you want to choose pro exposure. And the pro exposure is you controlling the ISO and the shutter of the drone because you can't adjust the aperture of the cameras on these drones. But I choose to shoot in auto most of the time if I know that I'm not gonna do a heavy grade on the shot and the lighting is kind of consistent. And when you're shooting in auto, then you can just tap the screen, and then adjust the exposure by dragging up and down, and then hold, and it's gonna lock the exposure. So now you know that even though you're shooting in auto, it's gonna lock the exposure. And as soon as you want to readjust that, you just press a different part of the screen and it's gonna adjust the exposure for that. Taking photos with your drone means that you just press the button on the right hand side of the screen that looks like a film roll if you're in video mode and then choose photo mode. Choosing photo mode is gonna bring you into a 4x3 look and here you can choose between a bunch of different settings depending on what kind of drone that you have. I just go down here and then I choose JPEG plus RAW so that we have a raw photo that we can edit when we want to. And most of the time I'm also shooting in auto because the drones nowadays are very good to actually set the correct exposure. But I'm seeing that we're getting a little bit of a low battery here, so uh, I think we should bring it back now. This is also something that you shouldn't really do. Because that can happen. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> you almost got it. Yeah. <laughs>